With thresholding, we can detect multiple objects using OpenCV's match template function. In the official tutorial, they discuss a little bit how to do this, but it's very brief. So if you have any questions about how thresholding works with template matching, I'll be going more in depth with it in this video. I'm also going to be using the debugger in VS Code, so that should be interesting if you've never seen how to use that before. Hey, I'm Ben, and this is part two of my OpenCV series. In part one, we used the minmax location function to get the best matching position for our needle image. But match template actually returns a result matrix for all of the positions that it searched. So the idea behind thresholding is instead of just checking the best match location to see if it's above a certain threshold, we want to try to get all the locations that are above the threshold that we set. You can also think of it like this. Instead of just trying to get the position of the one brightest pixel, we'll try to get the positions of all of the white pixels above a certain threshold of whiteness. So in the case of our farm image where we're trying to match all these cabbages, we're hopefully going to be able to get the position of all of these white spots, these bright spots that correspond to the cabbages in our original image. So starting with the code that we left off with last time, I'm actually going to delete most of this. I'm just going to keep the match template and the image reading parts. And let's take a closer look at the result that's returned by match template. So I'm just going to print that out. And when you run this, you'll see that match template actually returns a multi-dimensional array. And it's got a bunch of numbers in it. And each one of these numbers represents a confidence score for how closely the needle image matches when placed at a certain position on the haystack image. And because this result matrix is so large, NumPy will actually truncate it for you when you print it out like this. It'll add these three dots to indicate that there's a lot of missing data. So if we wanted to see all of our data, uh, we have two options. One thing we could do is we could change the NumPy settings by calling set print options. And by importing sys, we can tell it to print basically everything that's in our data to the console. But you want to be careful with this. If you have a lot of data, then doing this will actually lock up your process. And in our case, the data that's in our result array is really too large for the console to handle. So the other option we have is we can try using the debugger. So I'll go ahead and delete that code. Then here, after we call match template in the line below it, I'll put a breakpoint. And so clicking there indicates that we have set a breakpoint for our debugger. And then I'm going to go over to this run tab with a little bug on it. And here there'll be a button to run and debug. So when we run this, I'll choose to run it as a Python file. And as our program is executing, when it gets down to this line where I've set the breakpoint, it'll stop and it highlights this line for us and it also shows us all the variables over here in this uh, window on the left. So I'm going to move these windows around a little bit and we want to take a look at the result variable. So down here is the result. It's still truncated here, but we can expand this. And then we can keep expanding these items further to get into seeing, you know, in the first row of our data, what appears there. And we can actually step through all of those individually as well. But of course, there's almost 2000 items here. So it would take you a long time to go through all of it. But if you wanted to know the confidence value at a specific position, say zero for the Y and 22 for the X, this would be the confidence value there. So we got 0.1311 for that one. So the way that match template returns its data, the first dimension in that matrix is the Y position and the second one is the X position. And when you're done with your debugger at this step, you can press play to continue the execution or you could step over lines individually as well. And just to make this extra clear, and in case you don't have a debugger to work with, I'm gonna swap in a much smaller image for our haystack and our needle so that we can print and see the entire result from match template. So I'm using this super tiny picture of copper in the game Albion, and out of it, I cut an even smaller needle. So that should be plenty small enough for us to actually see the result if we print it from match template. So when we run this, now we can see that we do get the full matrix printed out. And so this first value here, this 0.65, that's the confidence that the needle image matches the haystack image at that position. And that position is where y is zero and x is zero. And so this first list is the entire column where y is zero. The second one is the column where y is one. So you can imagine match template is taking this needle image and it's moving it across every spot that it can place it inside this haystack image and it's giving us a score for it. 
and that score indicates how closely the needle image matches up to the haystack image that's beneath it, if you imagine them kind of like overlaid on top of each other. And you'll notice that the size of this result array isn't exactly the same dimensions as your haystack image. That's because if you were to take your needle image and place it towards the bottom side or the right side of the image, kind of overlaid it, part of the needle image would kind of hang off the edge. So it's kind of ambiguous what a meaningful match value would be when the needle image isn't fully on top of the haystack image. So to handle that edge case, OpenCV decided to just not include those values in the result. I'm sure it's not even doing that comparison. And if you look at the match template documentation, that's what it's trying to say here when it's talking about the size of the result matrix that you're going to get. For example, our haystack image here is 27 by 16, and our needle image is 7 by 7. So you expect the result matrix to be 27 minus 7 plus 1, so it'll be 21 in the x dimension. So each one of these inner lists should have 21 items. And I just counted them up, and they do. And in the y dimension, we should have 16 minus 7, which is 9, plus 1, which is 10. So we should have 10 for the outer dimension as well. So now that we understand our result matrix a little bit better, what we want to do is we want to get all of the positions where the confidence value, the scores here, are above a certain threshold that we set. So if I set my threshold to 0.8, I would want to get all of these 0.8 values, all these values that are greater than 0.8, but none of the positions for the values that are below 0.8. And to do that, the documentation suggests that we should use the numpy where function. So I'm going to set my initial threshold to 0 0.85. And then using np where, we're going to get a result for all of the locations above that threshold. And then let's go ahead and print out that locations result to see what we get. So when I run this, you can see that we got two locations above that 0.85 threshold. The first array here are your y positions, and the second one are the x positions. So the first one is the first dimension of that matrix, followed by the second dimension of that matrix. And in this case, we found it at two positions, where x is 1 and y is 1, and then also where x is 15 and y is 5. So that's great that we have the data for our positions now, but the format that's returned by np where isn't super convenient. So let's convert this into a list of xy tuples. So to do that, I'm going to use this magic looking line of code right here. So I guess first let me show you what this line of code does, and then I'll explain to you how it works. So you can see when we run it, first we had these two different y and x arrays that was returned by np where. And then what we end up with is a list of xy coordinates. So let me explain this from the inside out. The first part's the easiest to explain. These brackets, colon, colon, negative 1, that just reverses the list. And I'll bring up a Python terminal here to show you. So if we start with a matrix that looks like this, it's just a simple two-dimensional matrix. Using that reverse syntax, it'll just bring this second list to the front and put this first list in the back. So you can see it just reversed the first dimension of this matrix. And the second part of this line of code is the zip star. So star unpacks a list, and zip merges lists into new lists of each item that's at the same index. So star, by unpacking a list, is essentially just going to remove the outer dimension in our matrix. So instead of having a single two-dimensional array, we'll have two one-dimensional arrays. And then zip is going to make new lists for us where it takes all of the items at a single index and combines them together. So the first list will be 7, 10, the second list will be 8, 20, the third list will be 9, 30. So if we did zip star res, and let's keep our reversal in there, this will return a generator. And so to see the result of that generator, we can just wrap it in list. So there you can see the result we get. It's a list of tuples where we took our initial list, we reversed it, and then we combine the items from each list that share a common index. So that's how in our code we were able to go from these two arrays and combine them into xy tuples. Okay, so in our code, I've gone ahead and switched back to our initial images. I'm just gonna play around with this threshold until I get a reasonable number of results back. So at 0.85, I'm just getting back one result. So let's lower it a little bit. 
at just 0.80, I'm getting back a few results. Uh, they all appear to be very close to each other though. So I'm gonna lower it a little more. Okay, and so when I drop the threshold down to just 0.5, I get back a whole bunch of results, uh, but not an overwhelming amount. And I'm curious to see what it's matching here and what this looks like. So let's go ahead and use our knowledge from the last video and draw rectangles for all these locations that we found. Okay, so this code should look very similar to before. Uh, this time I'm checking if locations, so that's if we got location results from npware above our threshold. And then we're going to need to loop over all of those locations to draw a box for each one. And there are certain things that aren't going to change through each iteration of that loop, so I went ahead and pulled those out uh, before we do the loop. So that is the size of the needle image, the line color we're drawing, and the type of line we're drawing. And then for each location that we found, the top left corner is just going to be that location. And then we can calculate the bottom right corner again, just using the size of the needle image. And then I go ahead and use rectangle to draw the box. And once all those have been drawn, I am using I am show to display the matches. So let's go ahead and see what we get. Okay, so here it looks like we got five real matches and they're all cabbages, so that's a good sign. But of course, in our results that we printed out, we're seeing a lot more than just five position coordinates. And in the result image, some of these green lines are really thick. So what's happening is, is that we're finding a lot of different position results that are very close to each other. And when we draw all those rectangles on top of each other, it results in these thick looking lines. I wonder what sort of results we can get if we drop the threshold even lower. I'll try 0.4. Okay, so at point 0.4, we're getting a ton more results, and we're getting almost all the cabbages, which is really good. But we're also getting several things that aren't cabbages, like this haystack over here, uh, this rock that this pig is looking at, just the middle of the grass here. So if you're writing code to find all the cabbages, this may or may not be what you're looking for, because this does eventually find all the cabbages, but it also finds a lot of false positives. So I'll just keep adjusting the threshold until I get as many cabbages as possible without actually getting anything that's not a cabbage. All right, so 0.48 is pretty good. I get a lot more cabbages, but I'm still getting this one false positive over here. And at 0.49, I've eliminated all the false positives and I'm just getting cabbages, but I'm not getting all of the cabbages. So depending on your use case, this may or may not be the result you're looking for. So I decided to play around with the comparison method that I'm using. And I found that this square diff norm is actually giving me the best results for this particular image. And with square diff normed, that was one of those comparison methods that actually inverts the results. So in this case, the black pixels are actually the best matches. So in our code, I actually changed it so that locations we're searching for are actually below a given threshold. And the threshold that I have set is 0.17. You can see this actually gave me a lot more cabbage matches without any false positives compared to that coef norm that I was using originally. So play around with the comparison method, play around with the threshold that you're setting to get the best results. But even using this other comparison method, I'm still getting a lot of overlap between my rectangles, which visually might not be a big deal, but of course that indicates that we're getting a lot of results in our result list that are very close together. So that's actually not gonna be as useful if you're trying to identify good locations to click on. But I think this is a good place to stop for this lesson. And in the next video, I'll talk about how we can group together these overlapping rectangles into single detection results. And not long after that, I'll make a video showing you how to apply these object detection techniques in real time. So let me know what you're using OpenCV for in the comments, and I'll see you next time.